Hello, Agape and friends. Happy Easter. This is one of my most favorite days of the year, where we get to join Christians around the world and proclaiming in one voice that Jesus is alive. He is risen. He has defeated death. Such good news. Now I know uh, this Easter uh, isn't ideal. Our situation isn't the best. We would much rather be together, worshiping together and celebrating together. But let's not let that be our focus this morning. Instead, let's keep our focus on what Resurrection Sunday is all about. Celebrating the fact that Jesus is alive, giving praise to God for what he has done. My mind this morning goes to the ladies who discovered Jesus' empty tomb, who, who saw that the stone was rolled back and then the angel told them, He is not here. He is risen. Imagine the feelings that they have in that, that moment. A feeling of hope, a feeling of awe, a feeling of wonder and excitement. May we have those same feelings this morning. May, may we together in our homes celebrate and worship together. Let's do that now. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Is Jesus paid in all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow lord now indeed i find thy power and thine alone can change a leper spots and melt a heart of stone Cause Jesus paid it all All to him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He washed in white as snow In him complete, Jesus died my soul to save. My lips shall still repeat, cause Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. He washed in white as snow. Come on. He washed in white as snow.
of sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and stay. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Yeah. Oh, come to. Says you wait for 
Stars they wept, the morning sun was dead. The savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, his blood poured out for us. The weight of every curse upon him. was waged, the power of hell forever broken. The ground began to shake, the stone was rolled away, his perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting, our resurrected King? Rendered you defeated forever he is glorified forever he is lifted high forever he is risen he is alive he is Could not be overcome. 
now death wears your sting. Our resurrected King, strand of unity. Thank you so much, Jacob, for that time in worship, and welcome everybody from all over the place this Easter Sunday. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you so much for this day that we can gather together from all different places. We thank you for the act of love that we're celebrating today uh, that you did on our behalf so long ago. We love you, Jesus, and we invite you to join us uh, during the rest of this time in your word. In your name we pray. Amen. Eloi, Eloi, Alama Shabbatani translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Those were Jesus' last words on the cross. What a chilling thought to consider Jesus after hanging on the cross for hours, cries out to the Father, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? To, to feel that separation from the Father, to know that, that in that moment, that, that perfect relationship had to be torn apart. That the Father had to turn his back on his Son in that moment. Why have you forsaken me? This can be a hard thought to consider, actually, as we think about Jesus dying on the cross. And in that last moment, that these are some of his last words that he speaks in that moment of desperation, he felt that separation from the Father. Was Jesus actually unsure of what was going to take place? Uh, was he feeling actually that, that God uh, had somehow missed something in the plan? No, he wasn't uncertain at all. John Piper framed it bril brilliantly when he said, The why here that Jesus says, the why here isn't a quest for a theological answer. It's a cry of spiritual desolation. It's this desperate moment that Jesus cries out. The why isn't looking for an answer, but it's, it's him expressing the horrors of the abandonment that he felt in that moment. Jesus knew what he was doing and why he was doing it. And he knew what would happen to him as a result. I think of John 18, 4, when the mob came to arrest Jesus. And we see there that Jesus says, it says, knowing all that would happen to him, Jesus said, who have you come for? Jesus knew all that would happen to him. He was not caught off guard and he wasn't surprised. But in that moment of desperation, of abandonment, he cries out to the Father, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus' last words on the cross were not a reflection of uncertainty of what was happening. They were a cry to his Father in his greatest moment of pain. But these words, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? These were not accidental words. They were very purposeful words. Even in that moment of desperation, Jesus 
actually was accomplishing something very incredible as he was saying those words and the people around heard him say those words. He, he actually, in that moment of desperation, of separation from God, of excruciating pain, was able to accomplish something for the people that heard him and for us still today, as only the Son of God could do. And so we're going to look at three things that Jesus accomplished through him saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We actually find uh, that this is a direct quote of Psalm 22. And Psalm 22, we know, is a prophetic psalm about the Messiah. And so this is incredible. As the onlookers were around and they heard Jesus say this, their minds would go to that whole psalm. And they would understand in that moment that there was more going on than just Jesus crying out to his Father in a moment of desperation. He was quoting the first verse of Psalm 22, and he was accomplishing three things, as I said. The first thing in quoting this psalm he accomplished was to say, look at these messianic prophecies. Look how they're being literally played out before your very eyes right now. That all of these things that were told about me so long ago are literally coming to pass right now as you watch this whole thing unfold. And so if we look at Psalm 22, there, there are at least three other parts other than the first couple of verses where there are direct messianic quotes that are played out like this narrative while Jesus was on the cross. So you do have verses 1 and 2. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, the psalmist says? Why are you so far from my deliverance? and from my words, and from my groanings. But then if you look on to verse 7, it says this, Everyone who sees me mocks me, and they sneer, and they shake their heads. And we see this directly quoted in Matthew 27. Then as we look at further down in the psalm in verse 16, They have pierced my hands and my feet. This, is, this reference is particularly interesting. Because it speaks directly to the act of crucifixion. But crucifixion was an act of torture that wouldn't be invented for 500 years at least after David wrote this psalm. And so he speaks directly to something that didn't even exist yet. What an incredible thought. And then we look at verse 18. They divided my garments among them, and they cast lots for my clothing no, this was being played out like a script before them. God's word coming to pass, being, being shown to the people that heard Jesus say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They can instantly understand. He's quoting this psalm. And for those hearing it, they would see that David's powerful revelation and prophetic words would cause them to be like the Roman centurion that after Jesus died and all the events took place said, surely this is the Son of God. What an incredible thought. Second, those words on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They showed them and those of us, they showed them then and us now that separation and the separation he experienced from the Father in that moment was a theological and spiritual reality that was caused by their sin and ours. Our sin, their sin, placing him on the cross. Our sin placed Jesus on the cross. He became the substitution for me and for you. In that moment of our sin being placed on him, God the Father was forced to turn away from his Son, to, to reject his Son. The consequences of our sin separating us from God is a reality that Jesus faced for the first time in all of eternity. Never before had he been separated from his Father. He prayed that for us, in fact, in John 17, that, that we would be one as he and the Father are one. But in that moment, 
he experienced that separation. All sin of all mankind for all time was hoisted on his shoulders on the cross, and he bore it all for us. Yes, the crucifixion was brutal, incredibly brutal, and excruciating. In fact, that's where we get that word excruciating. It comes from crucifixion. It speaks to how awful it was. But experiencing the abandonment of the Father, that was the crushing blow that sent Jesus to his death. However, praise be to God. And that's why we're here today, is that this is not where the story ends. This isn't the end of the story for Jesus and thankfully for us. That is not where the story ends in Psalm 22 either. Psalm 22 continues on and it tells a story of hope and redemption. And so the third and last thing that Jesus' words reveal to us from the cross is that he knew the feeling of being forsaken by God was only temporary. And he knew it wasn't his end. And because Jesus knew it wasn't his end or his destiny, we can know that it doesn't have to be our end or our destiny as well. David says later in that chapter, And you answered me. And you have not despised or abhorred the torment of the oppressed. You have not hidden your face from me. And you have heard me when I cried for help. Jesus certainly felt the reality of being separated from God the Father. But he knew, he knew that God would save him. As awful as it was, he knew all that was happening was going according to Scripture. As, as awful as the beatings were that he took on our behalf, he knew he was walking out the will of the Father. It, as bad as the crucifixion was, and, and as excruciating as it was, he knew he was walking out the Word of God. And as bad as it was to have God turn his back on him and reject him in that moment when our sins were hoisted on him, he knew that it wasn't the end of the story. He knew that there was more in store. What did he tell the Jews who questioned his authority in John 2 after clearing the temple for the first time? They questioned him, and he said, Tear this temple down, and in three days I will raise it up again. Well, of course, in John 2, it tells us he was referring to his body, and he was already forecasting the crucifixion. No, Jesus knew where he was going, and he knew all that was going to happen, and he knew that his death on the cross wasn't the end of the story. And so him referring everyone there and us today to Psalm 22, he was giving us the hope of eternal life and pointing us to a God that would not leave him in that forsaken place. Jesus experienced separation from God so that we wouldn't have to. Isn't that an incredible thing? Jesus experienced in that moment of being forsaken by his father was done so that we wouldn't be forsaken by the father. Jesus being forsaken by the father on the cross was so that today we can echo those words in Hebrews 10 that say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's only by the death and resurrection of Jesus on the cross for our behalf. And that's ultimately what we're celebrating today. Because in three days, that destroyed temple, the body of Christ was raised again and brought into victor victory over sin, over death, and the grave. Are you feeling separated from God today? You don't have to be. Are you struggling in this current state of separation that we find ourselves in these days? You don't have 
to struggle. Jesus' death on the cross, Jesus facing the forsaking of the Father, was our path to us not having to be forsaken. If you're finding yourself going through this difficult time in our world right now, and, and you don't have the benefit of that relationship with Jesus to help give you hope, to, to help bridge that gap for you, I would just ask you to consider today the price that was paid so that you wouldn't have to be forsaken. I'd ask you to consider asking Jesus to, to forgive you of your sins and to come into your heart and into your life. And, and when he comes into your heart and to your life, it's so that he can move in and make a difference. Jesus loves you. He loves you so much that he chose to, to go to the cross and yes, be crushed on the cross for your benefit, but to even face the forsaking of the Father so that we could have redemption and hope in Him. And if you are uh, curious today of what it means to, to enter into a relationship with God, it's as simple as just praying and asking Jesus to forgive you, to acknowledge your sin, to ask Him to forgive you, and to say, I want you to be in my heart, to be in my life, to be my God, and to be my Savior. And if, if you have a relationship with Jesus, and you're struggling right now with this time of, of really maybe feeling a little forsaken, maybe feeling a little abandoned, remember that you're not. Remember that Jesus paid the price on the cross so that we could live in victory. We are resurrected with him. So let me pray for us. And if you are asking, if you want to ask Jesus into your heart, into your life, you can pray with me uh, during this time as well. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for facing death, separation from God, and, and, and for having my sins placed upon you so that I wouldn't have to face that death and that separation. Lord God, if, if, there, are, if, any, if there are any of my friends out there today listening to this and they've never asked for your forgiveness, they've never asked you into their heart and to their life, Lord God, I just pray that you move in their hearts right now and you just cause them to pray this with me. Lord God, I know I'm a sinner but I know that you paid the price for that sin and that I don't have to walk in separation from you. So Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin and come into my heart and just renew my life. Make me a new creation in you. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Lord, and for all of us as we face this time, this difficult time of separation in our world right now, we pray, Lord, that you cause comfort and peace to come upon us, knowing that everything we face in this world is only temporary in light of eternity. But there is always hope in you. So, Lord Jesus, we place our hope in you. We ask that you bring healing to our world. Lord, we pray for protection for people from, from this virus and all that is happening right now. But ultimately, our hope is in you. We love you, Jesus. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Well, I love you guys. And I'm so glad that you joined us today. Jacob's going to come back and close us with a great song, Resurrecting. God bless. Take care.
of defeat. Resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive, declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your Spirit I realize the ashes of defeat. Resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. Resurrected King, come on, is resurrecting me. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The Where soldiers watched it.